Hello everyone and welcome to the Cyclocross World Cup here in Rookfin. Before we dive in, I want to let you all know that this course pre-ride is brought to you by Whoop. Whoop is a personalized fitness, health, and recovery tool that I've been using this season. It measures biometrics like resting heart rate, heart rate variability, respiratory rate, and much more to help you form healthier habits around your training, your work, and your lifestyle. Coming into this race, Whoop has been a big help for me getting over the jet lag and adjusting to my new European schedule here. To get in the green, you can go to whoop.com and use the code in the red to save on your first Whoop purchase. Check out that link in the show notes below this video. We're coming into the whole shot now, so let's get into it. You can see that there's mist on the GoPro here. The ground is noticeably slick, but it's not like an ice rink out there. So I'm really not using mud tires. I'm going out on Challenge Grifos at 20, 21 PSI. It's slick enough, but you want that fast rolling resistance. You'll see there's a lot of straightaways here. We had that big sweeping whole shot to the right. There was a crash on the first lap that there was quite a bit of a pile up. So hopefully there were a lot of riders that were able to avoid that. I got held up, but I was able to move around. And from that point on, you really had to focus on riding the groups well, because you'll see that this isn't a very selective course. It's a very fast track and a lot of opportunities to slide out. Here we have this off camera little climb. The line that formed was staying more to the outside and carrying that momentum and a more straight shot up that little climb. You can see the beaten in line here. That brown patch, it's pretty slick, but it's very slick on the grass as well. So coming by pit one, this is the opportunity to really tell your mechanics, up pressure, down pressure, make a change, 180 sweeping to the left. And we're approaching one of the more interesting features that we see in a cross race, the spiral of death. I'll forever say that it originated in the Nycross races where I'm from in upstate New York, but you'll see that this isn't a very selective feature. It's just bending slightly to the left with this decreasing radius as you get closer to the center, and then you make a 180 right, and then it's an increasing radius slowly, and you're able to really pedal through this entire section. It's more about leaning with the shoulders, trying to maintain that traction patch that you have with a tire like a Grifo on a slicker part of this track. See, we just passed that 180 roundabout. Now we're bending to the right and we're slowly able to increase our speed as the turn has a larger and larger and larger radius yeah. from the center. So it honestly was a pretty dizzy part of the track, but it's something that everyone had to deal with. It was interesting. It was fun. It's something that we don't often see. Here we're approaching the exit of the, the spiral of death here, bending to the left, up this little flyover, a little bit of elevation, there really wasn't a lot of elevation on this track you'll see coming out of that spiral of death positioning was important there wasn't a lot of opportunities to pass but now we're in a place where we can move up this is a really wide open place here we're going to bend to the left there are a couple ruts that started to form but make sure you're on the wheel if you're not on the wheel maybe take a deep breath regroup here we're behind the wheels of sasha weber and marcel meissen two german riders both regularly fighting for a top 20 fast riders and during the race, I was looking at their wheels, trying to learn a thing or two, look at the lines they were choosing. Here you can see, they're both trying to check out that inside line, but in that little sandy pit, it's really, you wanna arc those corners a little bit more to carry your speed of momentum. On the first lap, a lot of riders were trying to chop the inside, and if you're able to do that, because that sand's a little deeper on the inside, you have to get off, dismount, run through that corner, chop a couple wheels and then remounting at that 180 bending right but if you're on the bike you're able to get on the pedals quicker and re-accelerate quick little dismount here up the stairs across remount really quick feature it's not all that difficult but now this is a part of the track that you want to be towards the front of the group because there is a little bit of an accordion effect here throughout the race whenever there was a big regroup i wanted to make sure i was in the first couple wheels of the group and not six or seven wheels back because when you're that far back in the group you're always re-accelerating just a little bit harder than the guys in the front so you want to make sure that you're ha holding good position and then able to preserve that energy for later in the race because there were some really hard surges later in the race in the last couple laps and you really wanted to make sure you were, had that forward momentum a couple slick corners here watching what they're able to do i noticed both these riders were also on a grifo tire that mid-range tire as well Nice little rut, slingshot you back up, and now you're back into a heavier he pedaling part of this track. As we kind of bend to the right, you're able to pedal through this turn. And there's some fun little whoops, you're able to get some free speed as you go down, then back up these little humps, really going through the gears. You're able to pedal through this entire section. And then as we come to the end of the straightaway, slamming on the brakes. 
you'll see that this isn't a natural arc and a natural apex for that turn, but it's a really loose, sandy ground that it was almost like a shelf that it kind of dropped off. You couldn't really form a natural rut far on the outside, so it seems like a non-natural apex for that corner, but we're just looking to find that padded down firm sand to make that turn in. Back in the infield here, a couple slick turns, looking for that creative line. We're passing by pit two. Again, the nature of this course, there really wasn't a lot of reasons for you to go into the pits unless you had a catastrophic mechanical or you want to go up or down in pressure. A lot of riders try to go from, if they started on a mud tire, to go toward a mid-range tire because it was so fast and you wanted to save that power for later in the race. I'm going by Marcel Meissen here. Tricky off camber, very slick, but you wanted to keep pedaling, maintain that traction. And the line started to deviate later on. A couple ruts started to form as we came off that hill. And this is that. It's almost a harder part of the lap because the first half of the lap is everyone's fresh. You're coming off the pavement. You're in the group. You're coming out of the draft, and you really want to rail that first half of the lap. But now this is kind of that part where everyone recollects themselves because it's still a very pedaling heavy part of the track. Coming up and over a couple of these humps, it was a little bit faster to gap the top of that hump just to make sure you're able to keep that momentum and have that free speed coming down into those turns. So it's a little bit saving the watts, less of an acceleration here. Really tricky, especially in the first couple laps when everyone's fresh, just following the, re the wheels. Everyone's at their maximum here. So up another little hump. It's a fun little part of these cyclocross courses where some people are able to show both their skills it's just, it's a neat aspect that not a lot of fans see. Bending up to the left, there was a rut that got a little bit washed out. That was a natural apex. So later in the race, we had to readjust our lines for that little hump. Coming into the sand pit here, this is another feature that really got chewed up later in the race. See, I rode it very cleanly in pre-ride, but it was one of those features that after the, the under 23s and the elite women and the elite men, that feature really got dug out. So there was a lot of we were running it for most of our race just because it was the ruts were so deep coming out of the sand pit remounting going through the gears this longer straightaway you want to make sure that you're back on the wheel bending to the right here really use the entire course we call it tape to tape making sure that you're able to use as much space as possible up and over that hill minimize the power output out power output excuse me so you're able to carry as much momentum up and over dismount quick up and over those stairs slight little disruption to the pace and back on the pedals again we're in the final 500 meters of the course here i'm over on the left hand side just to seeing if there is a passing opportunity for those who saw the race already you saw the last lap battle between Ely Izerbeet and tom pitcock coming down this straight into the barriers these are full 40 centimeter barriers most everyone was hopping i'm a fast runner i was on the feet quick remount and you really want to make sure that you're on the pedals already because we're already at the start finish straight here it's dead straight 200 meters to the finish line very fast course slick conditions but you want to make sure that you're hooking up well with the tires but you had a tire that was fast enough and rolling enough you want to make sure that you're in the group conserving your energy and speed when you can and save those matches for the end of the race so thank you all for watching and don't forget if you go to whoop.com you can use the code in the red to save on your first Whoop purchase. We'll throw that link in the notes below. Thank you all for watching, and we'll catch you at the next course in Namur.